This is a news flash. Good evening, I'm Connor Alf. Okay, welcome to this special edition of Six News as we continue our ongoing coverage of Australia's flood disaster. As we go to air tonight, conditions have eased slightly across the state, but the danger is far from over. More than 150 schools remain closed and dozens of properties are now completely underwater. These pictures were taken just moments ago in Sydney, with the devastation still clear to see, despite today's welcome sunshine. Properties and lives have been ruined, with many regions only just recovering from the black summer bushfires, while some small businesses had barely made it through COVID. Tonight, those dangerous conditions continue for flood-affected areas, including on the roads, with motorists told that if you don't need to drive, don't. Here's the latest advice from the New South Wales authorities. What we still have to be aware of is the fact that thousands and thousands of people are still on evacuation warnings, that the rivers will continue to swell, that catchments will continue to experience flows of water not seen in 50 years and in some places 100 years. Uh, and that is what is our primary concern. But the easing of weather conditions does mean that rescue operations uh, will be somewhat easier. But it also means today, as Commissioner York has outlined to me and as she'll explain, a day of supplying, making sure that people who are isolated do have the basic products to get on with life and to make sure that they're comfortable and taken care of uh, whilst uh, the situation in their communities uh, subsides. The situation is far from over. That's the warning from the Bureau of Meteorology, who predicts it could take weeks or even months for the effects of flooding to subside. Sydney's largest dam is forecast to overflow for at least another week. And there's more rain on the way for much of the east coast following several days of flash flooding in Queensland and New South Wales. The heaviest falls have now cleared, however tonight there are fresh warnings further inland. The low pressure system that caused the once in a century weather event in New South Wales is set to collide with another weather system inland that is moving east. And while New South Wales is indeed the worst affected state, it is not the only one that's been battered by wild weather. Meanwhile, southeast Queensland copped a drenching and the rain is forecast to continue at least until at least Thursday. Beaches and theme parks have been shut as parts of the state received up to 200 millimetres in 24 hours. Flooding has worsened on the Gold Coast and in nearby regions with an emergency alert issued late yesterday for residents north of Pimpermar. A total of 10 million people across every Australian state and territory, excluding Western Australia, were, reflected, were affected by weather warnings yesterday. Now it's been almost a week since the rain began to fall. The weekend saw the situation escalate dramatically. Some roads, trees and houses were completely submerged by floodwater. Areas resembled inland seas. So far around 18,000 people have been evacuated in New South Wales. Almost that many remain on notice to evacuate. Parts of the state have seen up to one metre of rain, with the situation described as a once-in-a-century event. Emergency personnel from Victoria and Queensland have been deployed to New South Wales to help with the unfolding crisis, but there are concerns that that assistance still isn't enough. Take a look at this. A Nine News cameraman filled this stranded driver calling for help before she was rescued by fellow locals. It's a scene we've seen many times over the past week. I've called the police. They're coming. Communities are right now at breaking point. Those same towns battered by drought and bushfires only recently are again in the firing line of this flood crisis. Insurers have been hit with 12,000 flood claims following the record-breaking downpour. The Insurance Council of Australia says the majority to date are from the New South Wales mid-north coast. People affected by New South Wales floods can claim $1,000 per adult and $400 per child from the New South Wales government. Now take a look at this shocking footage shot in Queensland, which has caught the eye of the PM. It shows a car being washed away by floodwaters, a scene seen many times across the state since the wild weather first hit. PM Scott Morrison tweeted about the footage, saying it shows why you shouldn't go into floodwaters, adding, if it's flooded, forget it. 
Thankfully, this driver was able to get out safely before the car was swept away. There's been so much heartache, so much devastation in so many places, but there have also been moments of levity. Take a look at this Sky News reporter in Taree, New South Wales, reporting live when she was interrupted by something unexpected. I spoke to one local earlier before who said that they believe that this town was floodproof after the 1970 flood. Social media has also been the place where we've seen residents tell their stories, including this Port Macquarie resident posting to TikTok about their backyard completely going under. The flood emergency has made international headlines as well in Russia, in India, Russia, the UK and US, where a spelling error from CBS News was quickly picked up by Aussie tweeters. See if you can spot it. Of course, the correct spelling was W-A-L-E-S. Finally tonight, a look at tomorrow. Here's the latest for New South Wales on the Bureau of Meteorology's website, with the rain easing significantly since the weekend. And on the national map, Brisbane, Sydney and Canberra is set to have some welcome sunshine tomorrow, while light rain is expected in Melbourne. Partly cloudy in Adelaide, hot in Perth and heavy storms in Darwin. And that is this special edition of Six News for this Wednesday. You can find the latest on the flood disaster on our social media pages, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok and Lit. And at our website, sixnewsau.com. We'll leave you now with pictures of the wild weather in both New South Wales and Queensland. And don't forget, Leo will be back Sunday night at 7.45. Until then though, I'm Connor Alforque. Thanks for your company. Good night.